Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. So, I've got an updated version of one of my favorites and recent master tier achieving deep deck to share with everyone. This deck aims to play pretty slow early, throwing out units that can contest the board while tossing cards out of the deck. Once the game gets late enough, it transitions into a huge swing turn with Nautilus and multiple sea monsters for an overwhelming onslaught. It's a control style mid-range deck that focuses on surviving till turn 7 or 8 while accelerating its game plan in order to satisfy its win condition. I want to run through all my card choices, explain why they're in the deck, and give you the knowledge to pilot the deck yourself. The code for the deck will be in the description below along with the Mobilitics link. Before I get into the deck profile, if you're new, please consider hitting the subscribe button to stay up to date with my content. I'm less than 1000 away from a huge milestone, so let me show you something. This is the infamous graph that YouTube shows me that says, hey, people like your content, but they aren't subscribing, which in turn makes me sad. 82% of viewers aren't subbed. Bro, there's a see more button and I don't even want to click it to be honest, that's just so tragic. This is the only channel where you can get my specific style of content so you won't regret subbing. I also stream on Twitch often, so check me out over there if you're looking for live gameplay. With that, I hope you enjoyed this deck profile. Alright, looking at the deck, I should preface this with I am a self-proclaimed deep expert. I've used it to hit Master multiple times, and took it to both of Riot's tournaments, and went 5-0 in the first one, getting top 32, and 4-1 in the second. So I think deep, pretty nice, and it's uh, more powerful now than it was back then, so it's looking on the up and up. So getting into the numbers, we have triple drag dredgers when I'm summoned toss three. For non-deep deck players, this is pretty much one of your effects that you're gonna be playing around a lot, which is just, you know, summon, toss. Toss obliterates the uh, amount of non-champions from the bottom of your deck that the card says to. So drag takes away the three bottom cards of your deck, avoiding champions, so you don't have to worry about those getting hit. And it helps because you're trying to get to deep, which is a 15 deck amount. So the more you toss, the closer you get to that, and then you get big buffs on your sea monsters and on your Nautilus. So Dreg really helps doing that, of course. If you get multiple of him early, it's super nice. Uh, he's now a 2-1 again. Uh, he was a 1-1 for the longest time, and that was really, really bad because he can't trade up into a lot of things. Now Dreg can fight 2 HP 1 drops, and he can fight uh, 2 HP 2 drops, so he can actually trade up sometimes, which is really, really nice. It's good to have his aggressive stats back. Next we have Triple Jettison, a quick toss four. Now this looks pretty simple on paper, but Jettison actually has a lot going on underneath the surface. So, <laughs> pun intended, I guess. Um, Jettison, toss four, just quick and easy, but if you have two of them, it's a toss eight, and this can surprise people because you can have sea monsters on the board, or you can have Devour the Depths trying to resolve, and then you can burst speed, toss, go deep, which is a plus three, plus three to all of your sea monsters, and this can swing combats. You can use it as a combat trick, essentially, and you can use it to help Devour a push in case it gets hit by something, and you can swing a lot of stuff in your favor, or you can find lethals with it. Like, Jettison is just really cool to hold uh, if you have... Uh, extra spell mana though, you can spend it early, but if you hold Jettison for just the right time, you can actually use it to trick your opponents. And I like that a lot. There's some skill expression to be had with this card. It's really simple on paper, but really, really awesome uh, in execution. Next we have Triple Sea Scarab, one of the most broken cards. Now, I, it was one of my most hated for a while, and people gave me a lot of flack for it. It was a 1-2. And uh, now that it's a 2-3, it's so much better. Uh, it actually like single-handedly killed Slaughter Docks when it was a 1-2 because Slaughter would resolve, Sea Scarab comes out, and it's like, bro, I kind of need Terror of the Tides to win this game, or like some treasures, or even the vanilla at this point. Why is Sea Scarab coming out of Slaughter Docks? But now with the buff, he's actually pretty decent. He becomes a plus 3 plus 3, so that is a 5-6, which is good enough in my opinion. Uh, after he's deep, even if he comes from Slaughter, if you run Slaughter, uh, plot twist, I don't actually run it uh, in this list, and I'll explain why later. But Sea Scarab, super, super good. If you resolve one or two of him early, you, you want a hard mole for Sea Scarab, by the way. He hard carries the early game and gets you uh, tossed really fast. He has also some synergy with Maokai. So when Maokai uh, sees you play another unit, it summons a Sapling, and Sapling dies at the end of turn, or if it strikes something because it's ephemeral, right? So Sea Scarab will see that die and also uh, toss one off of that, and it kind of gets out of control if you have Sea Scarab and Maokai developed, or if you have multiple Sea Scarabs and you're seeing multiple things die, like your Jaw Hunters or spiders that die from Vile Feast, and Sea Scarab just goes 
and all of a sudden you're deep on turn seven. It's it's really crazy. Uh, on average, speaking of which, you want to be deep on seven. I've done it on six. I've even done it on five, which was absolutely insane. I auto won the game because um, I had three Sea Scarabs out, but I'll explain that also a little bit later. It was really, really silly. So yeah, you want to be deep on seven at the very least, and then you can do your Nautilus turn. You can do your big sea monster turns and whatnot uh, a little bit after that, or on seven, depending on how many lures you get off if you run lure in your version. So yeah, there's that. Next we have Triple Thorny Toad. Uh, Thorny is a meta inclusion in my opinion. I don't think he's actually that great at three, but in this meta where there's like a good amount of aggro floating around actually, like uh, Spider and... Uh, Jinx Draven. Thorny Toad's really good at blocking uh, like three attack units or less and then also being able to block them a second time dealing two damage to them over the course of a couple turns and when Thorny Toad dies heals uh, your Nexus too so it's a quick guiding touch essentially and it's a quick toss too which is just nice. He's just really good in uh, an aggro format, aggro or mid range because he will probably die so yeah and if not he's just there as a blocker he kind of also doubles up later if you get him later and he dies then he can sometimes toss your treasures if you have them developed in your deck as well so it's not all bad if you get him later but he's not like an amazing card by any stretch of the imagination next we have triple vile feast vile feast is really good this format with um uh zoe and other one hp units and just being able to get the quick drain on them it's a heal one so it's also good against aggro uh, you can hit like legion saboteurs and such and it also gives you a spiderling which is a 1-1 defensive body and if spiderling dies and sea scarab sees it that's a toss one so there's some synergy there next we have triple dead bloom wanderer another uh, anti-aggro tool because it has lifesteal right on summon toss three so it's the same amount of tossing as dreg so you're just you know playing these units back to back to back you're tossing out your entire deck you're getting deep it's really really nice dead bloom also can help stabilize um Mid, like early mid game uh, against fearsomes as well since he is a fearsome blocker so he has that going for him too on top of being able to heal immediately and if your opponent has like a bunch of one attack units you can block with dead bloom wander and then be able to block again later so get double on the heal value and there's just like a eh, couple things you can do with that so next we have jaw hunters when i'm summoning create a random sea monster in hand now this can also generate you a sea scarab which is not a bad thing uh when we talk about lure of the depths but jaw can help generate some of the sea monsters that you have you know hidden away in your deck or if you're tossing them out because then you can play like the sea monster on curve so like let's say you get the vanilla four which is let's see so like let's say you get jaw hunters and then jaw hunters gets you beast below and you don't really have anything to play on four you don't have maokai you can just play the vanilla four four i mean that's just pretty good uh, on top of that it has challenger so it can threaten uh some champions that come down on three uh, of course it has one hp so it dies to a lot of removal so you have to be wary of that but overall good card next we have double lure of the depths so this is going to be the like spicy take of this uh, deck profile. I think Lure is really, really good because of Sea Scarab. Being able to develop Lure just one time makes Sea Scarab a one drop. Now this is really, really scary because you can float the first couple turns and like let's say you have two Sea Scarabs in hand, you can play Lure and then play both of them on three. And now this is where it gets really crazy and this was the game where I got deep on five and instantly won the game, is I floated the first two turns, I played Lure, I had double sea scarab in hand and lure grabbed me my third one it was an absolute miracle and i played all three sea scarabs on turn three and then i had maokai on four. Oh my god and then on five i had like double drag and a dead bloom wander and like a bunch of stuff died and i just went deep instantly it was so crazy so there's that like really high roll you can play around other than that lure is also really nice at lowering the cost of your other sea monsters. So when Nautilus is leveled, he reduces the cost of your sea monsters by four. This means you can play Beast Below on the same turn as Nautilus for free. However, if you use Lure, all of a sudden now you can play Abyssal Eye for free as well, which actually has a huge amount of pressure because it's an elusive. Uh, there's a lot of elusives in the meta, so you can use it as a blocker, same turn that you summon Nautilus, or you can use it to attack and draw one. And then it also allows your Devourer to be one cost, your Ship Recorder to be two. Essentially, the discount is really, really powerful. And if you get both Lures in the same game, then you're able to play Devourer for free on top of Nautilus, and you're able to play a Hoarder for one. It only escalates. 
but I want to say that Lure of the Depths is completely optional. This uh, two spots could also be Slaughter Docks if you're playing against a bit like slower matchups and you want the extra uh, sea monster because you do sacrifice some with Lure of the Depths. You sacrifice the ability to get Terror of the Tides for free off of Slaughter and that is like really really huge even though it's an RNG effect. Slaughter Docks is very very powerful honestly. Um, it's just that Slaughter can be pretty slow against aggro, of course, because if you develop on turn 3, you're really, really sacrificing some HP because your opponents are developing their attacking units, like if they're playing Spider Burn or uh, Pirate Burn, you're kind of dying if you do that. However, Lure of the Depths can be cast with spell mana, and then it allows you to develop units after and play your sea monsters faster. So honestly, it just kind of depends on your matchup. Um, these, these two slots could also be salvage. I don't have salvage in this list because I think it's really costly. I don't like it that much anymore. I've had like a lot of times where uh, I don't have the mana to play salvage and even if I do, it's not enough to like bring me back in the game and I'd rather have lure for the immediate draw one. Uh, it makes the deck a little bit more consistent because you take your sea monster out and then you're able to play discounted ones, right? And then Slaughter, of course, like I said, has the potential to get Tear of the Tides out, uh, extra Shipwreck Quarters, extra Abyssal Eyes, but it can also hit Sea Scarab and Vanilla, so I don't know. The these two are up to you. I really like Lur. It has performed for me uh, in Diamond. It helped me get Master, and I think Lur single-handedly won me a couple games where Slaughter would not have, so yeah. It's definitely a swap-in, though. If you don't like Lur, you can play Slaughter Docks. If you don't like either of them, you can play Salvage. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day because you're playing, you know, 38 out of 40 cards the same, so it is personal preference. Next we have Double Abyssal Eye. I don't like to run super heavy on the sea monsters, of course, because if you draw them all early, you're not able to toss, you're not even able to play them, and you're generating sea monsters from Jaw Hunters anyways, and you're drawing them from Lure, so if you just run like two Abyssal Eye, uh, two Devour, and one Shipwreck Order, that's all the sea monsters you actually need to main deck, which is really, really nice. It lets you have more early game consistency and lets you run more removal options. So next we have Triple Maokai, first champion. Maokai is a huge accelerant to the deck. If you play something next to him, he tosses two, uh, summons a sapling. If uh, Sea Scarab sees that sapling die, like I mentioned earlier, that's another toss one. So it just helps um, get the game plan going. I really like Maokai, I really like having multiple. Um, and then like he can bait removal and then play another one. It's really, really nice. It also makes a double threat where the opponent wants to use removal on Sea Scarab and they want to use it on Maokai and they're punished for either one. So it kind of puts your opponent in an awkward situation and I like that. It's really, really good to have in this deck. Multi-threat uh, early game stuff is so, so good, especially if you have multiple Sea Scarabs. So we'd love to see that. It actually did so much for the deck, um, having this 1-1 buff on it and making it a playable card. Next we have the Double Abyssal Eye. It's just good, deep, elusive. You know, next to strike, draw one. So, eh, solid. Withering Whale, really good against Jinx Draven discard aggro, really good against Spider, really good against all kinds of burn. Hits a lot of one HP things, so pretty good there. Two Atrocity, apparently Atrocity is optional and people aren't running it in deep, and I think that's absolutely trolling. This could be a hot take, but Atrocity will always be a two of, in my opinion, in this deck, just because of the alternate win condition of surprise 13 burst damage has so much value, especially in slower or control matchups, where you can't really like hit face a whole bunch. If your opponent plays out of mana and you just atrocity for 13 on your Nautilus or you atrocity for 10 on your shipwreck quarter, you just win the game. And there's so much merit to that. It's only a two of, so it's not like it's hurting your deck at all. You can't really brick on it because you, if you see an opening hand against control matchups, you keep it and then you probably toss the other one over the course of the game. And you know, if you run double and you get double, that might come up to where you can just win off of it with 12 mana on double C monsters. So honestly, there's no reason to not run it at two just because it is its own win condition. And it's like the best, like Nautilus is the best possible unit in the game to use it on. So we definitely take those. Uh, double Devour, pretty good. Obliterate an enemy with less HP. This can help get rid of some annoying elusive units. This can help obliterate like Lucians and stuff. It's just good, has a lot of good targets. Again, if you use this like, mid con or like if you use this right and then your opponent uses some removal on it and you are four or eight away from tossing and you jettison at burst speed devour the depths will gain hp from going deep and then be able to obliterate over the threshold so that's pretty nice nautilus other champion 
What's also cool is Nautilus's first effect. <laughs> when I level up, copy tossed allies that cost four into your deck. So if you do toss your Abyssal Eye, your Devourer, and your Shipwreck over the course of the game, Nautilus just puts them back in, no problem. And then they're all buffed. Nautilus is a 13-13, he's massive, he kills things, he's fearsome, he's tough. You gotta love it. Nautilus is super sick. You're able to play a bunch of sea monsters next to him because they cost four less, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, one shipwreck because if you play him, you summon him, you get two treasures. Treasures are absolutely busted. You win a lot of games off of treasures. You could bump shipwreck quarter to two if you wanted to, but I think one is just enough. Where if you like play around it, you get it, or you get extras from Jaw, and you got your sea monsters, you got your treasures going, you toss the treasures, you win the game. And then double vengeance for a single target removal, uh, really good for things that you can't normally deal with. It's really nice to hit like masses with it. If they're trying to use an atrocity play, you can respond with vengeance, and sometimes they don't expect it, or you can respond with your own atrocity even too. So yeah, there's that. It's just good for dealing with things that you no normally couldn't. It's also good for hitting like Leviathan or Swain and stuff like that. So. Yep, overall that is the list. I think it's super solid. By nature, and this is something I've explained quite a lot on stream, Deep is an anti-control deck because if your opponent is playing control, they're playing pretty slow. They're not threatening you and they're not pressuring you, so you're able to develop all of your tossing. You're able to play with like a safety behind it. You can feel like at ease because it's like, oh, okay, I can just accelerate my game plan. I'm going to toss the entire game and I'm going to beat this control deck because Nautilus and Maokai are just really good against control. Maokai can you know, obliterate the enemy deck, leaving them out of resources, and if they're controlling, they're not really killing you, so they just deck out. Um, so yeah, by nature, Deep is an anti-control deck by all stretch of the imagination. So the way I gear Deep then is to be well-rounded, and I put in a lot of anti-aggro tools. That's why I have the triple Thorny Toad, the triple Vile Feast, the double Withering Whale, so that I can deal with aggro. And since I'm playing units that can contest, I'm playing spells that can heal, this deck becomes an anti-aggro deck too, like the way it's built. So it's just super well-rounded. It can deal with aggro, it can deal with control, and it has like a lot less variance and a lot less varying matchups. I would say the hardest matchup for this deck though is Zoe Aurelian Soul because that deck just has too many options. It's got like Hush, it's got Sharp Sight to deal with your elusives, it's got single combats and concerteds to kill your Maokai, it's got Obliterates that it can invoke for your Nautilus, and that deck is just, it's way too strong um, in general, but it's really good against Deep as well. So if that deck ever gets hit, Deep is going to be like insane. I think Deep has a lot of great matchups. I used to lose all Jinx Draven discard matchups with it, but since Sea Scarab has been put into the game as an early pressure tool, and I draw like my Vile Feast, my Withering against it every time, I can now beat Jinx Draven discard, and that's awesome. It's also good against uh, Degenerate Burns, like Spider and stuff, so very, very good there. I highly recommend this deck. It has like the Sea Monster Fantasy. I know it's a fan favorite deck. It's one of my favorites. It's very close to me. I've been playing it ever since it was released about a year ago now. You know, and I took it master multiple times, like I mentioned earlier. So yeah, I just have a lot of passion for this deck and I'm happy to be able to share it. And with that, I wanted to provide a good foundation for the deck. I encourage players to mess with the numbers, put in whatever twist you like. Like I mentioned earlier, you can do that. There's like two to four slots that you can play with. So yeah, you can make the deck your own. There's a lot of different things. You can add Ruination if you want to for like even more removal if you want to play more controlly. It's really, really cool. So yeah, and that about wraps it up for the deck profile. Now here's a couple live commentary games so you can see how the deck plays out. I'll be giving context of why I'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. Alright, so for our first game, we got Ezreal LeBlanc. Now, I'm pretty sure this is a Mimic-based deck where Mimic copies itself. However, there was just a patch today as of recording that made it to where Mimic can't copy itself. So I don't think that combo works anymore. Um, so we got Dreg, Double Sea Scarab, and Withering. Withering actually kind of nice. This hand's pretty, pretty good. I, I kind of want to keep it just in case because he could run a lot of 1 HP units and stuff and... Maybe I do some blocks that also put Withering in kill range, so those would be good for me. But we're going to do Dragon 1. Dragon 1, Sea Scarab on 2, Sea Scarab on 3, and then we pretty much have a setup to where if anything dies, they're going to toss 2. Um, open attack versus Sea Scarab. I think I want to Sea Scarab. You want to Sea Scarab as soon as possible in case he uses removal, because if he uses removal on Drag, then Sea Scarab will see it die. This puts the pressure on him to where he has to use like Thermo Beam or get excited, but see, since we played Sea Scarab, boom. Get the toss one when Dreg dies. 
Really, really good to do this uh, order against removal decks. Always play Sea Scarab as soon as you possibly can. Places to go, people to be. Kind of sucks. I'm gonna have to take this five. I really don't want to, but I'm going to just this time. This is the only time I'm gonna take it. After that, I'm probably gonna have to start blocking. Uh, Dead Bloom is very good here. Great top deck. Better than Maokai even. And then I'm going to swing with everything as it stands. Just kidding. I'm not swinging with everything. I'll swing with double C Scarab though. If one Scarab dies, it's an immediate toss Wasted too. Effort. Oh, what's he doing? Okay. Dude, wait, why would you flock now? You sh he should flock after combat. No, he's going to let me toss two more. That's a misplay. He should 100% flock after combat so these don't see Wander or die. But now I'm just tossing like a madman. There's a toss two, toss... Yeah, I tossed like four or five just off that interaction while taking his board. So, very good for me. I'm going into turn five with absolutely no mana though. Or no, not no mana, but no units to play. Just kidding. We are top deck gods. The prettier the rose, the sharper the thorns. Does he have second ravenous? If he has second ravenous, it's really, really annoying. Whatever. The rot must be cut away. Because we just got ravenous, and I guess he's got it. Whatever. Go ahead. I have to play Maokai here. I don't want to play anything else. I don't want to do withering whale. Business time. Hmm? If he doesn't have it, oh, okay, that's good for me. Naturally. Let's do... Devour actually doesn't put me deep, which is hilarious. Maybe it's actually just drag so that I can go deep and play Nautilus next turn. Um, I'm deep off of draw, though. I could save Devour for Ezreal or second LeBlanc, which might be better. This looks really sus, but I think it's drag here. Drag also allows me to do a Withering Well play. But just like that, we are deep on 6. And Maokai is pretty close to leveling as well. I can probably level him next turn, right? Because he's going to see Sapling die now, that puts him at 22. He's going to see something get summoned, that'd be 23, 24, and then when that dies, 25. So yeah. He will be deep, or he will be leveled next turn. Life starts small. We'll do this. Simpleton. Okay, I am. I can withering. I should have done it prior to combat, or we can hold it. Let's hold it then. Cool. Now Maokai is going to level off of. Oh, reputation. Okay going to level off of play when I play Nautilus. I might actually devour though depending on what he does. If he plays anything threatening. He's got seven mana. Draw. Draw. Okay he's got six mana now. He's looking for his combo pieces. He still has to target one more thing to get Ezra level and I'm going to devour it. Sentry. That levels Ezreal, that's fine. Okay. I don't really feel threatened by three mana, so I'm just gonna play the Nautilus. It's gonna be double champion level. Blood and salt. Blood and salt. And then Maokai is like this. One of my favorite level up animations. Little saplings are so cute. Ready, watch them. Bop, 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 bop. And bye bye deck. <laughs> So he's got no more champions left in his deck. He has to have champions in his hand. We generate a blocker this turn, and then next turn I just go big with sea monsters. <laughs> Check me out. It's fine. Blink, or you miss me. Then what? You swing for two, that's and that's dangerous. it. Yeah. I'm in. Good thing his mystic shot that he generates is not free. Oh, that's gotta hurt. That would be kind of broken, huh? Give them room to spread their leaves. Alright, so we got to first action devour. You will feast soon enough. 
Yeah, what you got? I mean, I have a quick plus three heal, so. What? What, what, what do you got? You gonna kill me? Mimic doesn't copy itself anymore. Oh. <laughs> well, I thought he was gonna at least try something. Okay. <laughs> we will heal these aisles. He gave me the Yasuo finger and then FF. I've never seen that combo before. That's a new one. Alright, going into game two, we have Championless Burn, probably. If it's Noxus Shadow Wilds, it's probably like Stygians and stuff. Uh, we don't need this. We can keep Lure, we can play Thorny. We keep Withering Well without a doubt. So yeah, Thorny and Withering are going to be very great. Okay, double Withering. Going to be very, very great. Oh, and we have our early game too. Don't mind if I do. Thank you so much, Deep Deck. Let's play our Dreg. One Atrocity gone. When you're playing Deep, by the way, the only cards you have to worry about, like paying attention to when you toss, is Atrocity and Vengeance, and sometimes Removal, so you can play around like, oh, I only have one Withering Whale this game because I saw it get tossed, but definitely Atrocity, that's the most important one. I have one Atrocity left in deck, and there it is. Um, okay, so maybe he's not aggro, maybe he's some kind of Undying List. I could float here, play Lure of the Depths, yeah. That sounds good. That's probably better than Thorny Toad since I don't need to contest the board currently, because I could get Lure into Sea Scarab, which would be top tier. All right, we'll take that, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna open. I'm gonna open and then play Thorny Toad after. Now, I don't know what he's doing. Huh? Wait, is he playing like Reckless Trifarians and stuff? I think he's aggro, but he just drew bad. Why else would he have Noxus in here and Whispered Words? He has to be running Reckless Trifarians. Okay, what is happening? Is he Marauders? I, I don't know, I'm so confused by this. Let's open and then play Devour on something that he plays, because he has to play something by now. Yeah, he's Marauders, okay. That makes more sense. We'll eat one of those. We get to eat one turn early because of Lure of the Depths. So that has come up that is relevant this game, so love to see that. Maokai, I don't have anything to play alongside it though. Hmm? That doesn't work. The yeah, it was obliterated. It didn't die. Um, I have nine mana. Can't really do double withering to kill the Marauder prior to combat. So I guess I'm just gonna play Maokai. I will tend this garden. And Go since I have left. the extra mana, <clears throat> I can withering now to kill it, or I can play Jettison. I think. I could also do this, let my Devourer die. I don't think that's the play though. I think I'll just do this. This puts him at one. I want to jettison this turn. Calling? Okay, that's not nice. I'm sorry. Um. Now let's just get rid of it before he can do anything. I can toss at any moment. Withering sounds kind of nice. So Nautilus is not deep. We'll play Jaw. Fresh is worth at least twice as much. Oh, let's go. That's a good one. So Jaw can grab the Marauders if he tries to play it this turn. Uh, and then Abyssal Eye can hit directly because I'm pretty sure he's not running anything that's anti-elusive with these colors. Another Whispered Words. Okay. Hey, this is a weird deck. Stare at the Abyss. It'll stare back. He could do Scribe. No. Go and harvest it. Fair enough. Swing with everything. I'm ten away from deep, so attack order doesn't matter. Better than he. Okay. He dies to atrocity as soon as Let's I go deep now. Fun. Don't think there's a lot he can do about it except for maybe vengeance if he runs. I don't really know what's going on in this list. Uh wait, am I eight away? Hold on. I have an idea. What if I just double toss atrocity now? I mean, I could also burst past him and then do atrocity during combat. I feel like that's safer for my mana. So let's burst past him, see if he plays anything else. I don't think he can do anything for five to prevent this. So I think I just win. I guess he could have grasp. I don't think this deck runs like heals or removal. 
again, I don't know what to really play around, so guess we'll see. If he somehow finds an out to this, I also have an elusive striker. I also have Nautilus coming out. Is it Grasp? It's Withering, so he does run HP. I think he top decked that too. All right, fair enough. So he's at one. That's fine. Maybe he runs Atrocity himself too. I gotta be mindful about that. All right. Well, we're gonna play Nautilus regardless. Maokai, cool. Not gonna play him though. Nautilus into shipwreck. The water rises. Lure of the Depths has pushed shipwreck to be playable this turn. Does he have execute? Bloody business. Cool. Fair enough. Pretty interesting deck, however, I think my sea monsters are currently- whoa, what's going on there? That's a cool animation. Are currently bigger than his marauders, so I'm kind of happy with that. And he has to block both. This is where he uses like, I don't know, an execute I guess. Next turn he can noxion guillotine both my dudes. Lifesteal, cool. I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot about this deck. Is he going to play another summon too? Or what? Like, what's going on? <gasps> it's kind of scary, I'm not going to lie. Like, actually. It is kind of scary. The Blessed Isles live through me. Anyone hurt? <laughs> um, we'll push that back into his deck. I can definitely safely do that, no problem. So these are going to add three. So these are going to be able to threaten my Nautilus, which is a little spooky. Run. Plenty for all of us. I'm just going to do this though. Block this one as well. Leaves me at seven, but I have open attack with Knot. I could also Vile Feast just so I have a spider as well, but it's not going to do a whole lot for me. If he has that 1 HP, I would do that. Yeah. Now I just have an Execute or like a big heal. Together at last. I feel like I want to play this though, so I have multi threats. Was he like second harrowing or something? Okay, he doesn't have anything, but. That was really scary, actually. I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> I feel like that was closer than it should have been. Good. He outplayed my atrocity, which was kind of hype. I did not expect that. And with that, I apologize only two games this time being showcased. However, if you want more deep content, I play deep all the time on stream. So check me out over there if you're looking for more gameplay of this deck. Um, I plan on playing it in tournament. I have multiple tournament rounds also on YouTube. Um, from previous ones where I have deep being played so yeah definitely tons of content on my channel about deep if you're looking for more and that's it for this one please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining it really helps me out since I'm still trying to grow I'll be releasing more deck profiles guides and gameplay highlights in the near future thank you so much for watching and have a good one laters